Good morning and welcome to Rahil Baptist Church for Sunday morning, May 6, 2018. This morning's message brought to us by Senior Pastor Michael Franklin is entitled, God's Holy Word. So I want to talk to you about the Word of God today. The Word of God. God's Holy Word. Turn with me to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 129. I want to give you three reasons God's Word is so important. Three reasons God's Word is so important. Number one, if you have a bulletin and you follow with us, God's Word is light. It is light. Listen to me, church. We live in a dark world. Dark and they need the light. Number two, God word, God's Word directs our steps. God's Word directs our steps. And number three, God's Word teaches us truth. There are so many lies out there. There's so much false information out there. And God's Word teaches us truth. So you need to uh, invest in the Word of God. Alright, let's look at number one. God's Word is light. Psalm 119, 129. Your testimonies are wonderful. He's talking about the Word of God. The Word of God. I don't know about you, but I love the Word of God. I love it. And it seems like the older I get, the more in love with it uh, I am. And folks, we have to read it. We have to read it every day of our lives. The Word of God tells us to read it. And in the mornings, we need to read it. We need to start our day in the Word of God. We need to end our day in the Word of God. Your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. The entrance of your words gives light. And folks, I am telling you, what if we were in here today and the room was totally dark? It'd be hard to read from the Word of God. Light illuminates. And the Word of God illuminates our hearts. In the uh, same chapter, 119, verse 105, look at this. Your Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What does light do? It keeps us from stumbling. It keeps us from stumbling. A light gives us direction. You, you aim light. If you have a flashlight at the dark places in, in, in your pathway that you are looking at. So the Bible says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Look at verse the rest of verse 130. It gives understanding to the simple. The Bible tells us in Jesus' words is, if you have the faith of a child, the faith of a child, you can believe. Folks, there is life in the Word of God. There is light in the Word of God. Look at verse 131. I opened my mouth and panted and longed for Your commandments. And the Bible tells us that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be satisfied. Folks, I do not go a day without reading the Word of God. When I am on vacation... I read the Word of God. Every day of my life, I read the Word of God. That's what panting means. And that's what Psalm is saying. And they even give an example as a deer pants for water. Our soul needs to pant to God. We need to hunger for God's Word. We need to be thirsty for God's Word. And the Bible tells us we will be satisfied. Psalm 19, go back there with me if you would. Psalm 19. Let's look at Psalm 19. Verse 7. There's a description of the Word of God. The law of the Lord is perfect. You know anything perfect? I don't. Jesus Christ is the only perfect thing I know. And He is all over the Word of God. The Word of God, the law of God is perfect converting the soul. That's why the Gideons go. That's why we knock on doors. That's why we invite people to church. It is the Word of God. And folks, there's only two things that changes man. Two things. It's the Word of God and the Spirit of God. You can't do it on your own. 
The Word of God shows us that light. The Word of God teaches us. Why? Because it's perfect. I mean, in this messed up world, we need something that is perfect. And the Word of God in Jesus Christ is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony, testimony of the Lord is sure. Folks, it never changes. It never changes. The Word of God is the same today. They're, they have not changed it. It is, it is God-breathed. It is God-inspired. The testimony of the Lord is sure making the wise simple. It's not that hard, folks. We make it hard. We overthink things. If we will just begin every day in the Word of God, if we will just walk with God every day of our lives, if we will just obey the Word of God, life would be much more simple. And you want wisdom? You want to know the mind of God? Get in the Word of God. He wrote a whole book. The book of Proverbs is the, the Proverbs of Wisdom. Verse 8, the statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Boy, you want to be satisfied. You want to be happy in Jesus. You want the joy of the Lord in your life. Make the Word of God, James says, to engraft the Word of God into your life. The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes Folks, I have been preaching and teaching this Word for 38 years. And I'll read the same passage that I've read 40 times. And everywhere in those passages, or somewhere in that passage, God turns on a light and shows me something that I had not seen before. And folks, I am telling you, it enlightens our eyes. It gives light to us. Look at verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Know God's Word and you will know God. Know God's Word and you will know God's ways. Verse 10. More to be desired than they are of gold. Yea, much more than fine gold. And I can relate to this. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Oh man, I remember my grandmother's biscuits. I could smell them in Binger, Oklahoma, cooking out in the country. And I, it would wake me up, that bacon in those biscuits. And on the table was honey. And I just squirted honey all over that. And I just lapped it up. <laughs> I did. Listen to me, folks. The Word of God is better than that. It's more precious than gold. Do not go a day without reading the Word of God all across this church or books, our daily bread. That is the first thing I do every morning of my life. Every morning of my life, I get the daily bread. It has the Scripture. It has the Word there. It has a prayer there. And it has an example. Great examples. Verse 11, Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them, there is great reward. Great reward? You talking money? Hey folks, God doesn't always have to do it through money. If you're healthy today, if you're blessed today, if you walked in this building on your own today, if you were able to pay for the gas in your vehicle today, you are blessed. You are blessed. And God's Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The second thing God's Word is, God's Word directs our steps. Oh folks, there's so many people walking around in darkness. There's so many people that don't understand the Word of God. There's so many people that are hurting inside. There's so many marriages that are failing. There's so many people that are just lost. They're just lost. And the Word of God directs our steps. Look at verse 132. Back in 119, Psalm 119, 132. Look upon me and be merciful to me as your custom is toward those who love your name. Folks, if you are saved, you are living under the mercy and grace of God. The grace of God is God's riches at Christ's expense. He found you. He found you. 
He saved you. He placed the Holy Spirit in you. And now we have direction in life. We don't have to wonder what we need to do. The Word of God guides and directs our steps. Now look at verse 133. Direct my steps by your Word. Folks, that's what instruction books let's do. And you look at a swing set. There's 156 parts to a swing set. How do you know to, how to put it together? It is written down. Listen, folks, life is complicated. Life is complicated and we need an instruction book. And God's holy word directs our steps. Hold your finger there and go to Psalms 37. Psalm 37, I love this. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And He delights in His way. Oh folks, we don't have to wander around in the dark. We don't want to have to sit around and try to figure out what God's up to. It's written all over the Word of God. There are so many of examples of Old Testament characters and New Testament characters in the Word of God. We have to read it. And it will direct our steps look at verse 133 again direct my steps by your word and let no iniquity have dominion over me redeem me from the oppression of man that i may keep your precepts oh folks man's ways are not god's ways man thinks about themselves god's ways are righteous god's way are god's ways are true God directs. God's Word directs our very steps. Look at verse 135. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. We go to school to learn. To learn. And in every school there is textbook. There's a math book. And you have to have that math book to pass that class. And folks, every day we can go to the school of life. Every day we can get our textbook out. Every day we can learn from the Word of God and His precepts. And it will make our face shine. Don't you love to see Christians that just glow with the the glow of God? Don't you love to hear these testimonies how the Word of God has changed your life? Folks, it's real and it comes from the Word of God. Verse 136, rivers of water run down from my eyes because men do not keep your law. Oh folks, when is the last time we shared tears over the sin of mankind? Over a lost world. Over people that die every day. Every day. You talk about every second. People die around this world every second. And many of them are dying without Jesus Christ. They need the Word of God in their lives. And we can help with that. We can give Gideon Bibles for that. Psalm 119.1 Go back to Psalm 119 verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. They also do no iniquity and they walk in his ways. I'm telling you, sin will keep you from your Bible or reading the Bible will keep you from sin. You have to decide. And folks, I do not want sin in my life as a Christian. And the best way is, and folks, that's the way God made you. You can't think two thoughts at once. And if your face and your eyes are in the Word of God, you are focusing on what is right. But I'm telling you, the media, and and we are so addicted to our televisions and media and phones. Everywhere I look, you go out and eat, and people aren't talking anymore. They'll take a bite, and then they'll get on their phone. Folks, I'm telling you, 
We need the Word of God in our lives. We need to seek God with our whole hearts. Look at verse 4. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statues. Then I would not be ashamed when I looked into all your commandments. And by the way, it is the Ten Commandments. Okay, they still are the Ten Commandments. I will praise you with an uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgment, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. And this is it. Listen to this. How can a young man cleanse his ways? You want to get right with God? Get in the Word of God. By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart, I have sought you. And folks, we put our whole heart into our jobs. We put our whole heart into relationships. We put our whole heart into things. And we need to put our whole heart into our relationship with God. And you will learn. You will learn more about God by reading the word of God. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. And verse 11 was what I wanted to get to. Your word. I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Let me tell you, listen to me, church. I am telling you it is important to memorize the Word of God. Just a few minutes ago, I told you, you can't, take two thought, you can't think two thoughts at once. And you're not always going to have your Bible with you. You're not always going to have your phone with you. But if you have the Word of God hidden in your heart when something comes your way, you can say, oh no, 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 no Satan. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can just start throwing out the Word of God and learning the Word of God and memorizing the Word of God. Brother Steve and I do this. We challenge each other every week with a Scripture memory. A Scripture memory. And folks, the Word of God will keep you from sin. It will keep you from sin. It will direct your steps. So we see God's Word as light. We see God's Word directs our steps. The last thing I want you to see is God's Word teaches us truth. Oh, listen to me, folks. There are so many lies in this world. There's so many people that don't understand the truth of God's Word. Look at verse 137. Back in Psalm 119, 137. Righteous are you, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. Your testimonies which you have commanded are righteous and very faithful. Folks, the Word of God is truth. My zeal has consumed me because my enemies have forgotten your words. Your word is very pure. It's not just pure. It is very pure. Therefore, your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteous. Oh, listen to me, church. The word of God never changes. It's the same back. It's the same as it has always been. And I understand King James. And I understand New King James. We can understand it better. But it is still the Word of God. And we need that in our lives. Why? Because it teaches us truth. And here's the verse I wanted to get to. Your righteousness is everlasting righteousness. And your law is truth. Folks, it never changes. What worked 2,000 years ago still works today. Jesus is still the way. Jesus is still the truth. Jesus is still the life today. Your law is true. Trouble and anguish have overtaken me, yet your commandments are my delights. The righteousness of your testimony is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. Oh, listen to me, folks. If you want to live a prosperous life, if you want to live a godly life, if you want to be successful in God's eyes, I'm telling you, read the Word of God because it is truth. 
Psalm 119. Look at verse 33. Psalm 119, 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of Your statues, and, it shall, and I shall keep them to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep Your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Three times in uh, Psalm 119, the writers tell us to do it with our whole heart. You don't read the Word of God just to say you read it. You read it slow. You read it again. And you, you ask God to reveal truth to you. Make me walk in the paths of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things. Folks, if you're too busy to read the Word of God, you are too busy. You need the Word of God in your life. Establish your word to your servants who is devoted to fear you. Turn away my reproach from which I, I dread. For your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. You want revival. And folks, I'm telling you, we're still in revival in our church. We're still in revival. God is still working. And I'm telling you, it will keep going if we will spend time with God and spend time in His Word. The last Scripture I want to share, Psalm 119, 162. And I close with this, Psalm 119, 162. I rejoice at Your Word as one who finds great treasure I hate and abhor lying, but I love your law. And here's the one I like. Verse 164. Seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Folks, it's telling us as Christians, we should praise the Lord at least seven times a day. And you know what will make us praise God? His Word. Read His Word. Talk to God. Talk to Jesus. Invite the Holy Spirit into your life every day and you will praise God seven times a day. I wonder what kind of world we would have if every Christian would praise God seven times a day. Folks, it would change this world. Great peace have those who love your law. You want peace in your life? Read the Word. And nothing causes them to stumble. Lord, I hope for Your salvation and I do Your commandments. My soul keeps Your testimonies and I love them exceedingly. I keep Your precepts and Your testimonies for all my ways are before You. Verse 171, My lips shall utter praise for You teach me Your statutes. I'll listen to me, church. We must spend time in the Word of God. In the Word of God. Father, thank You. Thank You, thank You for Your Word. God, I love Your Word. I do, God. I love Your Word. I thank You for Your Holy Word. And God, I pray that we as Christians, we as Christians, would spend time in Your Word every day every day of our life. I pray that we would seven times a day praise You for something. Thank You for our health. Thank You for our families. Thank You for our church. Thank You for the Word of God. I pray, God, that we would block out time for the Word of God. Lord, we schedule everything else in our lives. And I pray that we would do it. I pray from this day forward, we would not miss a day in the Word of God. And Lord, I pray we'd memorize once a week. Memorize Scripture. Memorize Scripture. And God, today, if there's one here that doesn't know You, God, I pray through the Gideon testimony, through the Word of God, they would come and give their heart and their life to Jesus Christ. There's Christians here that need to rededicate their life. I pray it be so. If they need to come for baptism, or join the church. God, I pray Your Holy Spirit would tell them today's the day. 
God, this is your church. This is your time. God, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?